After your model's open and you've verified your occlusion, your next step is going to set model axis. As you can see at the bottom, we have buckle bite and set model axis. Edit model, I just want to show you this for a moment. And what edit model does is it allows you to go in and use these tools. Now here's the cut tool, replace tool, form tool, reset model. The problem with these is that if you were to go in, let's say with a form tool, and change something on your preparation, then your restoration will not fit. I normally recommend you just don't go into edit models. In order for that not to show, if you look at the bottom of the bar, anytime there's a few dots, if I left click on that dot, I'll go to buckle bite registration, and I'm gonna left click on the dot, and you can see that it's now hidden. So I would advise you just to go ahead and hide that so you don't get confused and end up using that uh, as a trim model. It's just not advised that you use it. So we're going to go to the set model axis. Again, we're in the step bar. It's red. Set model axis has not been started and I can't go forward. If I tap this, I can't go forward because it hasn't been highlighted. And we're in the model phase. So remember, model phase, and we're in the set model axis step. So I'm going to left click on the set model axis. Now you can see that it's gone forward. It's still in beige. And I now want to set the model axis. I want to show you a couple of things. Here is the display object screen and the tool screen. I'm going to shut those off because what happens as you do this every time you use one of these if you want to leave it on and leave it open then for the next user or for the next time you use it it will be on this screen. So I'm going to left click the tools as you can see I can set the model access tool we can undo it or reset it I'm also going to turn on display objects. Display objects allows me to set either the upper jaw or the lower jaw. So I'm going to click on upper jaw. And as you can see, we now have the upper jaw in case I was working on tooth number three instead of tooth number 30. I like to set my model axis off of whichever axis that my preparation is on. We have analyzing tools and again this is color model turns on the colors on and off in the model box which just adds a model. I normally will not use these so I just keep those closed. Again I'm going to reset to the lower jaw. I'm going to right click and hold and I'm going to put this on the face bow. Remember that this face bow is laying on the countertop. So if you have the upper jaw, you have to bring it to the opposite jaw that you were thinking. Make sure that your buckle is, is to the buckle. So I'm going to turn the lower jaw back on. I'm going to move it. And if you hear where we have the dots and the stripes, this is about where you want to put the junction between the molars and the bicuspids. This comes very important when you do anteriors because you want the anteriors to lay right on this T. For posterior, I'm going to right click, place it so it's in the face bow to reasonable area, left click and hold, and I'm just gonna roll it so it fits in the arch. And then I'm going to look at the curve of Wilson, which is the curve on the top left side. Left clicking and then rolling the ball, you can see how I can move this for the path of insertion. And what I'm trying to get is I want to look at the adjacent teeth, make sure that we're in the long axis of the adjacent teeth, and also that I'm able to see all the margins. I can do the same thing with the curve of speed, which is up and down. I'm left clicking 
and going up and down and I'm again attempting to make sure I can see all the margins on my prep. Then if I right click I can also line the occlusal contours. Once I am finished I'm going to go to the OK button. I'm going to click the OK button. You notice you have to hit OK because I'm trying to click the space, the double bars, and it won't allow me to go. So I'm going to hit OK. It's applying the model axis. And then I'm going to go Next. You can see I now have a green line. And once the green line has opened, the double bars, which are the chevrons to go next, are now open. Once that happens, I'm going to left-click and go forward.